Okay, so uh, for Tears on My Pillow, uh, we had some questions that we promised uh, to answer and we want to get right into those questions without um, wasting any other time, which I first want to read you a text message that was quite interesting. Here it goes. Saban, I know you're in this congregation right now. You're watching me read your text message. You didn't think I'll read it. It says that, hi, coaches. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't. <laughs> I am not. I'm not editing. Okay. Someone says that. Hi, Bahati. As I had told you, I came here partly to find a worthy husband. Yes. Enough is enough. <laughs> if I could stand in front of this audience and declare it, I have reached the extreme. If you don't mind, hook me up with a single, mature, God-fearing, hard-working gentleman. Aged 35 to 45. You know? No, ladies, this, this is serious. And let me tell you, I am so happy for this person because there are so many people who are keeping quiet with their issues. They have prayed to God. They are God-fearing. They, they respect people. They, are com they, they want to commit so badly. They are, I mean, in need of this. And they are crying tears. Ladies, I know there are many of you, the single of you, 35, and some of you even beginning with 25, you're thinking, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. I'm not getting a man. I'm not getting married. The family pressure and all that, and you're really desperate to get a man. And so those are some of the tears that we want to wipe or to answer to this evening as we answer your question, how do you attract a loving, committing, serious partner? Because most of you are magnets to unserious people. You're busy attracting people that have no business being with you. And you're keeping them around you. Okay? So first things first. Yes, but before we go to that, please, in case you're in this congregation and you want to leave your number behind, why not? We have ushers. Where are the ushers? ushers Give them your please paper. Make sure that you take the numbers. If you're serious. Now, disclaimer. <laughs> The coach is not responsible for anything that happens after we have read out the number. <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> okay. okay. But on a lighter note, on one of the events we had, there was a couple that, uh, okay, people met, just like you've come, and they even got married. Yeah. Seriously. At least we have three couples that met at our events. And you know, when someone is just uh, by the door side and they're asking, where is Bahati's event? Where is the coach event? And then someone is directing them before they know it, he's a prominent lawyer around town and they're getting married, they're giving us invitations. Things do happen. Exactly. And that is what some of the things that we are going to talk exactly. about. When you come to such an event, make sure that the person is seated next to at least Weyanjule. Sekako. Yes, yes, you smile. You don't put on that tough face. You know? Some of you, you came to cry tears here. <laughs> you don't cry from here. Make sure that you meet someone, make someone your friend. Okay? Now, the questions that we have, number one is how to let go, move on, and have a happy life. I repeat, how to let go, move on, and have a happy life. That's question number one that we're going to deal with in relation to tears on my pillow. Yes, and it goes to people that uh, we dedicate it to people who listen to, never mind, I'll find someone like you. Eh? And you put it on repeat and cry all the tears in the world, but you, you're still listening to it, but you're still crying and rubbing your tears like a slay queen. <laughs> Like seriously, uh, sometimes a, a time actually comes in life where you just have to wrap up a chapter and move on swiftly to the next chapter. But we know the word swift does not apply in such in the same sentence with moving on, uh, especially if you really loved this person, if you really wanted to commit so badly, if you meant everything good for this relationship and wanted to see the future of this relationship. And all of a sudden, something happens and you have to part ways. This is life and those things happen. So what we want you to know is, how do you do that? How do you move on? How do you make that decision? And it's a lasting decision because most of you have a tendency of going back to your exes and you have, what, what do you call them? Retirement benefits. Yeah, some of you never close the doors. 
Some of you, you just don't know how to make an about turn and go. You keep reading the last chapters of your life. But you realize, Hilda, that comes from prematurely exiting. Okay. There are some people that exit prematurely. You're still interested in the person, but you're making decisions to move on when you are not ready to move on. In most cases, you close the door, but you leave it half open. In other words, you were not so sure about the decision that you made. Now, the moment you make a premature decision, there are chances that you'll keep going back. You will regret. Because you were not ready for the decision that you made. Now, what happened is your emotions overcrowded your judgment. It was just in the heat of the moment, probably you were depending on lies coming from your friends about your boyfriend, about your husband. You depended so much on the lies Okay, and you made a decision that was very premature. Now, after making the decision, you are turning back. In other words, you can't move on. Now, the tears that we have come from the regrets that we make. I mean, from the, from the regrets because of the decisions that we make. You should give your relationship a fair chance. Don't depend on ESA. Mm. Don't depend on who said what or who says what. To tell you, most people that we've encountered, the people that we've met, the people that we've talked to, are only regretting because they thought they were exiting, but they were actually not exiting. They thought they were getting out of that marriage, out of that relationship, but they were depending or they were fed by lies. So after making the decision, they want to make their bow turn, but it's already too late. Very late. The guy has already moved on. Yeah. He's already on with his life. And it's you who is struggling, it's you who is crying. And even if he has not moved on, but he has closed that chapter because he thinks there is nothing to learn from that, he thinks you're immature, because a person who makes an uninformed decision is a person that is young, is a person that has unrealistic expectations. And most of the people come to us, most of them come and they're at their wit's end. Some of them have packed their bags, and they come with them in the car, and they're telling us, you know what, I packed my bag, I'm not going back home. And we're like, you know what, by the time you came to office to this office to talk to us then that means you're not ready to actually go you need to explore all the options what is exactly taking you away from this home and there's a time I was talking to a friend of mine who was telling me she was leaving her home and she was tired she was fed up she had had about deliberately selfish and she thought deliberately selfish was actually advocating for people to get out of, of, of their relationships so when she came to me I was like no you you, you, you got it wrong it's about about bettering yourself so you can have a better relationship where you are or in the next chapter of, of, of your life. It's not about just quitting. And the reason as to why she was quitting, this is what she said, that I got messages in my husband's phone from other girls. Now, from other girls, and there are more than 15 girls, not just one single girl. And we went on for about 45 minutes. And I was very convinced that, by the way, these were flirting messages and bad messages. Maybe there was pornography somewhere. Maybe there was because the passion with which she was speaking, it was really rocking the office. Only to find out after 45 minutes that the messages were saying, Hi. Good night. Hi. Hello. <laughs> but... Because this person was insecure in her marriage. She thought whoever says hi actually means harm. Now, the, as the husband on the other side was this very friendly. Have you ever met those friendly guys? Yep. Friendly husbands yes. who entertain everyone. Yes. They meet someone, they're like, hello, hi. Oh, give me your number. And he gives the number. And when he gets home, the girl is, hi, we met at the supermarket. And the guy is, uh, hi. But, but there is nothing going but, but, on. But, but, He's just friendly. But, but Hilda, a pause. Even uh, uh, about, about the guys who were so friendly. Muslim, mm. <laughs> I way, you knew send, that was you coming. Send, you send confusing signals. You send confusing signals. You're too friendly. You're too nice. Huh? You're too friendly. You're too nice. Ladies. Hello. So when the, the, the ladies can't do. <laughs> 
may they just find themselves falling for you you know and uh, so i think it's only good that you put some boundaries don't you yes think so? yes yeah, very healthy boundaries, boundaries at least at least we was over tambre and peter wait ha em peter yeba let me tell you the ring is a magnet it actually pulls the side chicks it does not take them away so if you're thinking you're going to move with your ring like this it's going to invite them more I they are going to think by the time he committed to her he can also commit to me so he's going to get like a thousand of them namwe be bazimbye omutima ero mutima gwa guli kungulu we guti baguzimbye can't you have some self i mean esteem confidence love yourself respect yourself and have a proper conversation with your man instead of blaming them all the time for what they are doing because sometimes it's a personality trait that someone will be very friendly and i know there are some men who have a problem with their women who are so friendly to men and the woman says bananze mikwa no jenina joneji singa jaba sajja she finds herself that way the only thing she has to be taught is to create clear boundaries that that, that do not cross into her marriage that do not sabotage her marriage i think the pick out here is the boundaries yes okay uh, those late night calls mama even if you're too friendly <laughs> imagine emergency <laughs> But that <laughs> message munana pu msam chitundu pu and all of a sudden when you go to say this or omuri omugongo bono gukubota newe bukane suka ngalaba ka light ke sim and women with 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 the you know just opening your eyes to see extra network and every other time you must especially for the ladies eh hey, network ebula eh wabera na avao na gena na nonyeze walala wayo girira na manana gamba ye eh yeah okay mm. <laughs> that is very disrespectful that is what we want to say it is very disrespectful the moment you're in a mo you're at a level of commitment then just know there are certain games that are below the belt there are certain games that you can never play when you get to the committing moment that is when you cross over to being a man or a woman if you're still playing those games you're still a girl and you're still a boy